Okay, this lesson for the Cornet Project class, I will ask the question that was asked in a blog article that I noticed on the faithalone.org Grace Evangelical Society by Dr. Bob Wilkin. The question is, does a believer who stops believing cease to be a believer? He said, quite frankly here, it says, the answer is no, and the reason is simple. In the Bible, a believer is anyone who has ever believed in Jesus for everlasting life. He quotes John 3.16, John 11.26. Once a person believes, he is eternally secure and is forever in the category of believer. He did make notice or note that I realized that it does not make sense to many that a person who stops believing could still be called a believer. Isn't that contrary to logic? Now, I want to move forward before I go to the second page. And he mentioned the same is true in the New Testament regarding John the Baptist, uh, ho baptizon, Mark 6, 14. And then he said he was still called the Baptist long after he had died and had stopped baptizing. Some might say the title no longer applied to him, but Scripture says he is still John the Baptist, John, the one who baptizes. Now, he quoted John 6, 14, and we can look at that for just a moment. Before we get there, I kind of put a circle here about John the Baptist here. This is a noun, and after he was still called the one who baptizes. Make sure I check that out. I thought I had that on my notes, but it's in the text in the blog article, so you can read it there. So Mark 6, 14, use your blue letter Bible, you can look it up very quickly. So here we go. Yes, it's a present active participle here, which is a noun, and then before, however, which was really interesting, I went ahead and put before and after because that's true. So this one, this occurrence here, it's the present active participle showing after John has died, he's still described as the one baptizing, which we know he's not. Well, before he baptized, uh, what Dr. Wilkin reminded me of was an article by a man named um, Boyce Taylor from a book, Why Be a Baptist? And he says... Brother Taylor says, the man God sent to make ready a people out of whom the Lord Jesus organized his church was called by God himself, the Baptist. And he quotes, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. This is Matthew 3, 1. Mark you, he goes on to say, he was not called the Baptist because he baptized. He was called the Baptist by the Lord before he ever baptized anybody before he ever preached a sermon. He was called the Baptist because of the work God sent him to do. His mission was set forth in these words. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. That's in John 4 verse 1. His mission was the same kind of a mission that Baptists have always had. John was a Baptist because his mission, mission was to make and baptize disciples. And that's a quote from Taylor H. Boyce, Why Be a Baptist, Kindle Edition. So we have this striking observation that before he ever baptized, he was called the Baptist. And then by Dr. Bob Wilkin, his example of the present active participle, which we'll show how and why he got there, was that after he was dead, he still called the one who's baptizing which is still, it's a noun. We know it's a gerundive noun. So we have John was called the Baptist before he ever baptized and still called Baptist, one baptizing, after he baptized. So let's go back and see uh, what we have because we have two different men and certainly two different ages. Brother Taylor was years and years ago, and I'll have that date on there for you. And then we have Dr. Bob Wilkin, but both of them are using... John the Baptist to demonstrate that you can be a Baptist and never have baptized. You can now no longer be alive as John was now dead and the present active participle be used not to show the action, 
but to reference him as the noun. So we have a before and after, which is really fascinating. Because he says here on the second page of my notes, he says, no, in Greek, that is, uh, he's explaining why a person who stops believing is still a believer. It says, in Greek, a participle with a definite article. For example, like uh, we have in 1 John 5, 1, the one who is believing. Here it is. Definite article, ho, pistuon, present active participle. The one who is believing, that's the same as in John 3, 36, equals the believer. He said, Jesus said that the believer will never perish and has everlasting life, John 3, 16. That is true the moment one believes. One does not become a believer only after a lifetime of persevering in faith until death. If that were true, then no living human being would be a believer. We would all hope to become believers if we persevered in faith until death. So he gives an illustration from the Koine Greek Old Testament called the Septuagint when he goes all the way back to Numbers 35, which he mentioned this was spoken in their 2022 conference. Someone mentioned this. And he says, it is a present articular participle. Now the term to which he made reference was a manslayer, a murderer, the one who is murdering, or as we would say, the present tense in that present active participle, the one who's always, continuously, but that's not necessarily the case in the fact that it's a gerundive noun. And it says here, uh, just like a believer, hope is to own. Here, the one who is believing. He said the manslayer was a person who accidentally killed someone. He did not have to kill more than one person to be a manslayer. In fact, almost always, the manslayer was one who accidentally killed one person and then had to flee to a city of refuge to avoid being put to death. So, I think that's enough to go ahead and get to our lesson and look at the koine. You remember we studied that one is fathered through the gospel. Fathered through the gospel. That's genao. We know in Galatians 5 eight, Paul said this persuasion is not from God. So the persuasion that is from God is the gospel, the correct message. Paul said the persuasion which was not from God would be that different message, that other, well... It's a different kind of gospel, which is not another gospel. It's not even a gospel. So the persuasion here is the, is a, is the phrase for the gospel, uh, fathered through the gospel. In Romans 10, 17, we have the faith. You remember faith comes by hearing. It's a definite article, the faith. That's a noun. Out from a hearing, but the hearing through a narrative of God, the Word of God. Remember in John 1, 1, Jesus is called the Word. Jesus is God's narrative, or rather you could say God's, or the narrative of God is Jesus, ho logos, or logos, as I've been reminded so many thousands of times. You know, I wish when I was taught, I would have just been taught initially logos, but that's an illustration of priming. And this commercial on behalf of priming is brought to you by a person who's been primed. Once if that's what you were taught first, logos, then it's difficult to ever fail to iterate that and now reiterate it. <coughs> so we have faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We learned that term there refers to that word is the narrative of God. The word of God is a good translation there in Romans in our English Bible. And the word of God here in beginning was the words a good translation here. One is the content, that is Jesus is the content, he's God's narrative, so that the faith results. We know persuasion is essentially equivalent to the faith that's well established. You can go to Free Grace or Grace Evangelical Society, faithalone.org, they establish that very well. Patho is a verb, persuade. Remember in John 3, 36, the one, everyone who is believing or the one who is believing into the Son, already believing into the Son, is already having everlasting life, but the one who's negating persuasion, it's uh, like we're our, uh, the adjective uh, apathes, like apathetic, apathetic. We hear people use the word pathetic or apathetic. Uh, apathy is the word transliteration. When 1 John 5, 1, ganao generated is in the perfect passive indicative, and I put these side by side to show you that this antedates, so generated 
antedates the one who is believing. But now, the emphasis in his article is that the one who's believing is a gerundive noun. We've talked about that several times, a verbal substantive. We also notice that the persuasion is a noun, and we have the faith is a noun. And you remember we were speaking before about pace mone is essentially equivalent to essentially equivalent to faith. Faith, pistis, right here, the faith. So that we now have a gerundive, well, a present active participle function as a noun, just as faith is a noun, this is a noun. So we have patho through the gospel, so the gospel is the means of persuasion. The What's interesting here to me is how much uh, emphasis and contradiction there is or controversy there is in 1 John 5. One, we've reviewed that, where even in the New King James Version of the Bible, they changed it from the present tense to the punctuator tense and several different translations, but that's one in particular, ignoring the present tense of continuous action. Well, for example, a blind spot, well, an area I had not brought much light to is the fact that if that is a noun, and it is according to Dr. Bob Wilkin, and he is correct, it's a gerundive noun, verbal substantive, we've already established that. What I was often emphasizing or only emphasizing is what I'll show here in this space is that a person believes then they become opistuon. One who is always believing. Or as Dr. Wilkin points out, a gerundive noun, just translate believer. But according to this logic, that we've just reviewed, and even he said this is difficult for many to understand the logic of how can someone stop believing and still be a believer, and he used John the Baptist quite well to show that after he died, there's a present active participle. He used the Koine Greek Old Testament very well, that illustration in Numbers 25, the manslayer, the one who is slain always continuously, well, that certainly wasn't what the uh, translators or, yeah, the translators of the Septuagint were translating the Hebrew into Koine Greek, that language for those people that used that language. They weren't intending to state that the person was always killing someone. Rather, they were saying that the person's always being the manslayer. And in this case, this person's always being the believer. Now, that is if you're wanting to emphasize why someone, let's say, we often hear people say they won't lose their salvation, or we hear people say once saved, always saved, once saved, always being saved, uh, once saved, it's just always that way. Well, that's great argument. It's great logic. It does then make us, uh, me, I want to call your attention back to regeneration precedes faith, well, faith's a noun, so patho would have to be related to ganao. If patho produces faith and ganao produces the believer, ganao precedes the noun believer, who then believes. Notice the believer believes. And then faith believes. Patho leads to the persuasion, which is essentially equivalent to pistis. We just, they established, you can read several articles on Grace Evangelical Society blog articles demonstrating irrefutably that in the Corne New Testament, we have pace mone persuasion equals faith. You even have in John 3.36, the opposite of believe is uh, negate persuasion or to be without persuasion. So great work has shown so that if you're comfortable saying faith comes by hearing, the faith, notice a definite article, but the hearing 
through narrative of God, God's narrative, that's Jesus. He's the content of the gospel. He also said in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, that he will be in association with us until the end of the age. And then we know that, go here for a moment, akuo, back up here to how do we secure hearing if faith comes out from here, a hearing, a report, but the hearing through a narrative of God, which Jesus is the content of that, the Lagos. Akuo, we learned in Luke 16, 31, that Akuo is related to Patho because it says that since they are not listening to Moses and the prophets, then they would not be persuaded though one were to rise from the dead or one might rise from the dead. So you notice how it went from they're not listening because they're not persuaded. So persuasion has much to do with apprehending the hearing. And here we have ganao precedes the noun and patho precedes the noun. We have patho is that upon which securing the hearing is codependent. We have the faith is codependent upon the narrative of God. Jesus is God's narrative. He's the content of the gospel. The gospel were fathered through it, ganao. Paul said the persuasion that they were under the influence in Galatians, the book of Galatians, to those churches, which was his statement describing the incorrect message, which was not another gospel. So he said that, other, that different gospel is not another gospel. It's not even a gospel at all. So this is interesting because I had never considered a, the believer... First, you can be a believer when you haven't yet believed, like the Baptist is the Baptist who's not yet baptized. And as Brother Wilkin pointed out, the Baptist is still called the one who is baptized in present active participle after he's dead. So that the case that generation, patho, precedes faith, the noun, generation precedes the believer, and then the believer believes would be consistent with this logic so that this is not, by the way, this is perfect passive indicative, shows antecedent action. When I watched Dr. James White with his video, he was using this text to show that regeneration precedes the act to believe, and it appears to find more merit in that generate precedes the believer, the noun, just as patho precedes the faith just as through the gospel we have this ganao. So the entirety of it all is completely codependent and interdependent upon the gospel. The gospel is as here they were not listening to most of the prophets who the prophets were preaching Jesus the coming Messiah. They were ignoring that. John 6 the father draws Jesus mentioned that the prophets, that they would all learn of God, referring to his father who sent the prophets. He said, the ones who listened to the prophets, that is, learn from the prophets, would come to me. So the prophets were preaching the gospel of the coming Messiah. Uh, we preach the one who has come and fulfilled. So my blind spot, I suppose, or that spot and area where I have not really carefully looked at it, was I had been working on the assumption that you would have to believe to become the one who's believing. And Dr. Wilkin has made a case, just as uh, Brother Taylor has made the case, that you can be John the Baptist and be called the Baptist and have never baptized. So before he, was, before he ever baptized, he was called the Baptist. And after he was dead, he was still called John, the one who is baptized in present active participle. So that we have ganao is in antecedent to the believer, the noun, this noun, the believer. And patho is antecedent to the faith. Because I always wondered, when you say the faith believed, that's a personification. Well, where do we get the person? You get the person here through regeneration. So that's very interesting. So this is why I would never be someone, as I pointed out, between believe and believing we have demonstrated generation. However, in light of all of this, we have to know now that this could be a complete circle, that 
the faith that results from persuasion, and it's essentially equivalent, pace mone, with hey pistis, they're essentially equivalent, and it's subsequent to the act to persuade. And then, of course, here the persuasion obeys the gospel. People that are persuaded obeys the gospel. When you go to 2 Thessalonians 1 8, the cross reference there, it talks about uh, the judgment of, of, of those that believe not, believe not the gospel and do not obey the gospel, do not believe that is obey. Well, I went and looked this up. This word uh, obey is from hippo below and akuo. So we know persuasion is involved in securing the hearing because that's what we learned in Luke 16, 31. So you say, well, where are we at now with the simple statement that's often touted and seldom elucidated that regeneration precedes faith? Actually, persuasion precedes the faith and genao precedes the believer. Who hasn't yet believed? Isn't that interesting? And this faith hasn't yet been exercised and this results from persuasion this results from generate and if you say well where is that kind of logic uh, let me see if I can find my sheet here I'll pick that up and see here we go it says here I realize that it not does not make sense to many that a person who stops believing could still be called a believer isn't that contrary to logic well John the Baptist was called the Baptist before he ever baptized and he was called the Baptist, present active participle, which is also a noun, the gerundive noun, verbal substantive, after he died. So <laughs> Dr. Wilkin made his case and Brother Taylor made his. Brother Taylor made his case that he's called the Baptist before. Dr. Wilkin made his case that he's called the one who is baptizing after, which he's saying that just means he's the baptizer, not that he's actually doing it because he's now dead. He's saying he's the Baptist because he ha even when he hadn't yet baptized. So here we have generate prior to the believer, the noun, before they've ever believed. And we have patho prior to the faith that has not yet been exercised. So anyway, it's interesting to me because uh, you see a lot of uh, people, vitriol and bitterness and some terrible things are often said. Uh, I would just notice that uh, as we continue to grow and learn that it's not as simple as I'd like to say, except I will always uh, call upon people to believe that would be exercise the faith they now have. Well, always, uh, as I would say, this one who's believing is appealed to to believe just as the person who's finally persuaded, that is, results to have the persuasion now has the faith that can be exercised. They're also the believer, which apparently between faith, the faith, the noun, and the believer, the noun, we don't have the lack of the person in the personification where I was uh, sometimes, as in one class, it was very disturbed or confusing when I said, well, now faith believes. What does faith do? It believes. Well, that really was not, that, that worked in our Western culture with some abstractions. But if I say it's a personification, I'm really not answering the question. So if you take what Dr. Wilkins says, you line up the faith, you line up the persuasion, you line up the believer, all three of these are nouns. And he and Brother Taylor both made the case that you can be the believer. You can still be a believer when you stop believing. So you can be the believer before you've ever believed. You can have faith before you've ever exercised it. Now, these certainly don't occur temporally. As Dr. R.C. Sproul said, it doesn't occur temporally. So when people are adamantly saying what precedes what, I think it would be better, as I would say, if I were in a class with Dr. James R. White, I'd say, aren't we saying that Gnao generated antecedes and antedates the noun believer? As we know, patho precedes the faith, which the persuasion and faith are essentially the same. And as faith has not yet been exercised, neither has the one who can be called a believer who's not yet believed, although these things happen quite instantaneously.
and simultaneously as one person was interrogating a Calvinist and another person was interrogating an Arminian. And when you watch a person in the uh, inquisitor's seat, we all seem to take on a persona of uh, almost willing to vilify someone if they can't explain something to our satisfaction. But what we're learning in the Corne Project class is that everything is about the gospel. We're fathered through the gospel. It doesn't say before or after the gospel. We notice Paul described that which was a different gospel, which is not another gospel. He said that's the persuasion. He said this persuasion is not from God, Galatians 5.8. Well, the persuasion that is from God is the correct message, the correct announcement. And it is the, the only gospel, the correct message, the one that says that out from works of law, no kind of man will be declared right except through faithfulness of Jesus Christ. So the persuasion that Paul was advocating and supporting is summarized as the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, not ours. And then this simple statement that I always say, because it's intelligible, and I wouldn't really know how to get in this conversation, and I certainly wouldn't be prepared to set this up like this until it was given to me recently, and then I noticed the article from Dr. Bob Wilkin because it's apparently a point of contention. I don't mind. I think, as I've told you all, it's good when you find a controversy, take your text and go look it up because people have interest where there's conflict, controversy, or friction. So that what I did when I noticed that now there was pushback and feedback and somewhat uh, some uh, stress on some of you when you were asking me, well, you say a person's always believing. That's because of present tense. Well, it's also always being the believer. That is, they continue as John was called, this is a noun, and this is the present act of participle, which is also a noun. And John's dead, and this is what he was called the Baptist before he ever baptized, and he's called the one who was one who is baptizing after he died. So we know it's not referring to the action, it's referring to what he his position. He's the Baptist, the baptizer. So here the believer precedes the the act to believe, the generate precedes the believer, patho precedes the faith. So I don't know too many people. I don't really know anyone that set it up like this. Not that that would be unusual for us. But again, as I say, if you'll set these up, place it across there, you'll notice now why those of us who go into all the world to preach the gospel don't have a better answer. <laughs> we preach the gospel for through it. It's a means of persuasion. Through it, it results in person being persuaded. That persuasion is equivalent to faith. That person exercises the faith. But who's that person that exercises that faith? Well, they're the believer. So when we really break that apart, even Dr. James R. White, why I hesitate to say he's correct is because he's saying this proves regeneration precedes faith. It's actually generation. It's actually the believer. Patho precedes the faith. As Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We know that hearing is apprehended and secured by persuasion. Luke 16, 31. We know it's the persuasion from God is the gospel, the correct message. Also, the gospel is the instrumental means of this. So, ganao is achieved by the gospel. <laughs> persuasion is what the gospel does. It persuades. It generates. It results in faith. It results in the believer. The faith is exercised, which we call the act to believe. The person exercises this faith, which we call that believe, puncture action. And then as one who is believing, again, we have the present act of participle. You have life in his name. So there's no contradiction. There's no inconsistency. And it doesn't really help either side of the equation, except it glorifies the gospel. It emphasizes the gospel. And it magnifies the message of Christ. It marginalizes the constructs. It removes the temporal folly and focuses on the instrumental means and essential function and outcome of the gospel. So we're looking at the process. The gospel generates, the gospel persuades those persuaded. It results in the faith. Those generated results in the believer who hadn't even believed yet. Hasn't believed yet. Of course, it all happens 
And how long did you have the faith before you believed? How long were you the believer before you exercised the faith? And those would be silly questions. But these are good case here. And what I like about it as a Baptist, uh, I really like that John the Baptist was the illustration of Brother Taylor years and years ago that he was called the Baptist before he ever baptized and that today, as of yesterday, Dr. Bob Wilkin used John the Baptist to show that he was still known as the one baptizing after he died. So have a blessed day and enjoy this lesson.